This is Leviathan 1. It's a small planet with a radius of 1,516 miles and an average temperature of 79 degrees Fahrenheit, and is also the only planet in its star system, and is habitable for life. It gets its name Leviathan from the fact that it's mostly dominated by a large, warm sea with only two major landmasses. Longinquis Insulae, an archipelago, and a larger island named Terra Incognito. Where we start off, uh, Leviathan 1 is uninhabitable due to its, its, its lack of oxygen in the air and lack of food. food. Except for one where we're going, but we're going to that later. But due to its habitable temperatures, and abundance of water, it could sustain a tropical rainforest environment like the Amazon rainforest. In the seas of Leviathan 1, there are volcanic vents that spew hot minerals into the water. They're similar to how these are hot spots for or microscopic and sometimes colonial life, I don't know. These are going to play host to the first Leviathan 1 life forms, which at first are microscopic and heterotrophic, which means they have to eat, eat minerals from the volcanic vents or other microorganisms. But a few million years later in its planet's lifetime, some microorganisms evolved photosynthesis, where they used sunlight to power their metabolism. Um... And this innovation leads to the first photosynthetic microbes, similar to algae on Earth. These photosynthetic microbes are going to be the first phytoplankton and will oxygenize the air of Leviathan 1, making the atmosphere breathable for future land colonists, similar to the great oxygenation uh, of Earth. With this in mind, life soon evolves to become colonial life forms, forms, and then a few million years later, multicellular life forms. Now with this in mind, we can design some life forms to fill out our small tropical planet, Leviathan 1. First off, we need phylums, or body plans, to fill out our ecosystem, we're going to be using two phylum. If you don't know what a phylum is, a phylum is a, is a group of animals that share a body plan, like how all vertebrates sh share a common vertebrated ancestor. For our motile animal, we're using bilateral symmetry like arthropods, mollusks, and vertebrates. And to make it more interesting, my project more interesting, we're making our sessile, or fixed-in-place animal, asymmetrical, like sea sponges, instead of radially symmetrical, like uh, anemones and starfish. Now, with our two body plans in mind, we're going to design them, starting off with our sessile organism. Now, here we have a gray, fleshy blob. Our sessile organism comes in a variety of colors, but we are using gray as an example. Just like Biblarion and Project Rose and all the other alien biosphere people that I really like, like we're going to be adding features to it to help it survive as, it, as an organism um, um, as we go on. For feeding, it has four petals with, with vibration sensitive cells, or setae, that also double as catching plankton, or, and, and eyes at the ends of the petals, those which are in an X-shaped formation, the eyes help sense predators, and a mouth in the middle, which has a blind gut, similar to jellyfish and some flatworms. These petals have colors on them to deter predators, and it can spit ink from its mouth to blind predators or scare predators away. Hey. Hey. Now we already have a strange looking animal, but don't worry, it will get weirder as we go on. 
for breathing, it will have sponge-like tubes that 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 take in oxygen and and spit out carbon dioxide. What's known as aerobic respiration. That's what we have. One of these tubes will have a crest or bump on it that will signify it produces gametes or sex cells. It reproduces via broadcast spawning, where it releases his gametes into the water with the hope that a few of them can combine with another gamete and make more of its kind. And that's what most sex cell organisms on Earth do, so that's what it will be using to reproduce on Leviathan One's rocky sea floor. We'll be calling these asymmetrical organisms the melaniostoma, or ink mouth. Now we'll go to our, our bilateral motile creature. Here we have a snake-like green creature with lamprey-like gills at the top of his body, allowing it to breathe. Eve. Its primitive brain is very large and is at the front of its body, while it has a, a thin tail at the back to help it propel in water. Just like the, the Melina stoma, it will be in a variety of colors, but we're using green for this one. Now, because it's motile, it doesn't need to be overly defensive, so it can use speed to, to escape from predators. For locomotion and reproduction, it will have 10 and fins, fins on the side of its body that help it propel itself in water, or with the addition of the paddle-like tail. For gametes, it reproduces is like chickens using what's called a cloacal kiss, where where a male cloaca and a fe female cloaca uh, uh, rub against each other and or kiss, is secreting in, uh, uh, gametes into each other and making offspring. It's also dioecious, which means it has male and female, all similar to its, its prey. Now here's the fun part. Let's say a random mutation occurs in its evolution that gives it a special feature. Rather than a singular head, this creature has two independent heads with its own, own brains connected to the larger brain in the center, giving it free brains. Each of these mouths will have a, 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 a mouth saw in the mouth similar to the extinct helicoprion on Earth allowing it to, to tear through flesh. Ash. Ash. It's, it's, lar its middle brain is more streamlined to help it swim through the water. Now here we have our motile oh, pred predator, predatory animal. Sorry. So, with, with its, its two heads, three brains, and mouth saws, Cause an efficient swimming. We'll call these guys the duo stoma, or two saw mouth. And there we have it. Two phylum that will, will start the blueprint of our ecosystem on Leviathan 1. For many million years, or a few thousand, or a few million, whatever, or, or these creatures will, will coexist and often fight with each other. Some um, of the melinostoma will die, and some um, of the uh, duo edestoma won't get food. But, but evolution and ch it makes different changes to its life. Life isn't always permanent. In the next episode, we'll cover how our two bilaterians get in diversifying to many clades to fill the niches is, is on Leviathan 1.
Thank you for watching this video. I'm planning on making this into a, its own special uh, series, like Alien Biospheres or Project Rose or the Rubia Project. Act. Act. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.